Good. All right, so we're gonna have some fun with speed squares today. This is one of the tools that it's critical to understand how useful this is in real life. We're using it for all kinds of things all the time. Mr. P, would you hand me that two by six? The most basic application of the speed square is to understand that it's got a lip on the edge and that lip is gonna allow us to hook it on stuff, right? So we'll catch it either way on the edge of a board and of course it's gonna lock down. Either way we turn this and it's gonna give us the option then of taking a 90 degree angle and squaring something off. So the most common application of using the square is that we will get a number, pull a tape, find a length, make a mark, and then to make sure before we cut that our mark is straight, we'll just bring our square up to the mark and we'll draw the line across. It can't be more basic than that. That really is the critical thing that a speed square is gonna get used for. Now, obviously there's a lot more going on with this tool. We've got on the edge of it, we've got a scale. So we've got from this point, the inside edge of the, uh, I, was, I would call it the marking edge, we've got an inch, scale here that's going to be rough, doesn't have any sixteenths, it's all done in eighths, but it allows us to use that space and use it as a, a clear marker for numbers that would be make sense in the eighth inch increment. So if I wanted to determine, let's say for example, I got to have a three and a half inch piece, I can come out here and just use this, don't have to pull my tape measure out. And it's got that ability then to give me help. And the speech course also got this ridged or notched section. I want you to see that because this is start up. So up. You can see the yep. notches. There you go. Close to the camera. Can All you right. Zoom in here? There you go. Well, as far as I'm doing. Yep. There. Nice. Are we zoomed? Yep. yep. All right. So in each of these increments, we've got little notches, and those notches allow us to set our pencil in those locations. So let me give you an idea of how that would work. If I've made a three and a half inch mark, I can take my pencil and set it into the notch, and then by pulling my speed square along the edge and holding my pencil in place, I'm able to draw a line across that surface at three and a half inches, and I get this really nice, nice clean line at whatever mark I want. Now these are marked out every quarter of an inch. So each of these measurements are quarter inch increments. So you actually have to look at it first to make sure you're actually marking the one that matters. But that's what this scale is designed to do. It's also helpful if you, wanna, if you have a mark or you have a piece of material, you can read that edge. So I can take and go, all right, this is a two by six, five and one half inches. I can see into that space. This one's got that particular diamond little mark at three and a half and five and a half inches. So up here at three and a half, got the mark at five and a half. So it's telling me that this is my two by four and my two by six specialty mark if I wanted to create those dimensions. Very, very simple to understand that, but not until you get to use it for a little bit and feel familiar with it as a tool. So the biggest challenge to understand this thing is what's going on with the degrees and we struggle to make sure students understand that this corner here, it's referred to as the pivot point. It's even actually labeled pivot. And you've got to know, you've got to believe, you've got to trust, you've got to learn, you've got to decide. The pivot point is where everything begins. So when we're trying to do an angle with our speed square, you start with this piece tight against your board, everything is working off of that motion. The pivot points everything. We've watched students try to do this with things and figure out angles. We don't care what's happening to this piece over here. We only care about what the pivot piece is doing. So the fun part about that is if I can get that figured out in my brain, start with pivot point, lock this in, as I bring this piece around, I'm able to read what's taking place on my degree scale. So here I've got a degree scale from zero, five, 10, 15, all the way down to 90 degrees. And I can set this number and what it's going to give me is not this line. And this is the, where everybody gets confused. I think that because I've got my pivot point tight and a mark at 25, that that's what this must be. It must be for this, it's not. 
this 25 degrees is timing what's happening over here on this line. And that's the thing that must be understood. If you can get that part figured out, life gets easier real quick. So if I wanted to know what I what we'll call a plumb cut is on a 412 pitch rafter tail, I want to be able to identify how to determine that. So in addition to the degrees, I've been given another little scale, and that are the numbers down here, 1 through 30. And this is referred to as our common rafter scale. So what we get is the ability to run our pivot point tight, and then as we take our speed square and spin it, if I go to a number on this common line here, I were, I'm going to get what would be called the plumb cut of a 412 pitched rafter tail. We'll explain more of this in the process, but I want you to get the idea that then this mark that I'm making here, my pencil line, is going to be the angle I would have if I cut a rafter that was at a 412 pitch. This will be the tail cut so that I would put my, my fascia material on this edge. And I've got now a perfect degree angle. This is actually 18 and a half degrees. And we can understand that too, not, by just, not just by looking at the common rafter scale, but by looking at the degrees that correspond to it. So if I come over to my four and 12 pitch here, I can look all the way across and find myself looking at the angle on my degree scale over here. So these are corresponding, and I can get an 18 and a half degree increment here, same angle I've got over here. So both of those would be ways that I can use this scale. The need to get familiar with things is the critical part of this. So we're gonna be giving you lots of work with the speed square here in the field when you're on site. We'll be saying, give me the cross cut line at a 30 degree angle. And what we'll do is we'll come over here, we'll set our pivot point, We'll pull down to 30 degrees on our degree scale. I'm at 25, there's my 30. And once I set that in place, the mark I make, again, is off my pivot point. Gang, this is essential to understand. The line comes over here. And now I've got a 30 degree angle from my speed squares pivot. The challenge is everybody wants to do this. They go, well, I've got 30 degrees. I must be marking this line. No, this is, that's totally irrelevant. We never mark over on this face. We always mark off our pivot point line. That's the essential first piece to understand with a speed square. Now, when we actually start doing roof work and rafter tail framing and cutting, that's where the degree angles come into play. And it's really important to understand that so that we have a reference point to why we're using the scale the way we are. And when we start thinking through what the numbers are here of our common rafters, these are relationships between the rise of a roof in relationship to the horizontal distance called the run of the roof. So when we do this with roof work, we always are gonna give us the distance of rise in relationship to 12 inches of horizontal movement. So if I come over a foot, how high up did I go? Because I have an angle for every roof. That's what the scale is telling us. This at a 412 pitch would mean I came up four inches for every 12 inches I ran horizontally. And each corresponding number is the same. So if I come up 12 inches, as I go over 12 inches, I'd have that mark. Now you should identify that if I go up the same number and across the same number, when I draw that line, I have a perfect 45 degree angle. And that's what my degree number registers as well. But I've got a 45 degree angle at a 12 in 12 rise run relationship. Now, there will be more videos and more practice on the speed square, but this is what we'll call speed square basics, speed square 101. Get comfortable using it. It's got lots of potential to be the most important tool in your tool belt besides your tape measure. Ms. H's got something she I wants to say. <laughs> Where are you reading? Are you reading from here? Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. Or right here? Here's the thing to understand. The point I'm registering from on the edge of my speed square is registering the edge of the board, not the radius section. And um, 
one of the things that has to be understood is that when my speed square registers from the very edge of the board, then the number I'm reading has to be aligned with the actual edge of the board, not the radius where I see a flat surface. I'm not reading through this mark I'm putting on. I'm reading all the way over to the edge of the board on this side here. And if I don't get that right, I'll be off a couple of degrees every time I use my square. Great point, Ms. H, thanks so much. Okay, we'll show you some more about this as we wander through, but when we get you to some assignments at home, we want you to play with this speed square, practice using it, and we'll be sending you assignments on these basic tips and tools so that you understand how to get familiar with it. First things first, get comfortable with locking that thing down nice and tight and making marks. That's the basic thing that you gotta understand, and from there, we'll play more games with this tool. Back to speed square again. We got the one that goes in your pouches here. Your, probably your second best tool compared to your tape measure. Um, then you got the bigger speed square. Um, you won't be carrying this around your pouches. You'd be having it laying around a bucket or something in your toolbox. Um, this is nice to have when you're cutting wider material. So you just make one big mark. Um, all you gotta do is the same thing as the other speed square. Just lock it in, mark on the pivot point, pivot side. Then you get a nice straight on. You can use this, but you have to make it flip it over to the other side. Now, if your wood is like, if your wood's like chipped up and everything, that will throw something off. Okay, that's why the bigger ones works a lot better. But otherwise, it's the same concept. It has the teeth marks. Same thing. It goes by quarters. If you can see, these are the same layout of the speed, regular speed square. They even got the layout on this side to do layout on bigger. Maybe in layout choices. So you can be three and a half, five and a half. Same thing when it comes to making a straight line. Just lock it in. Same stuff with the small one. But otherwise, this here, um, it's nice to have, but it's not mandatory to have it. You don't have to go out and buy one if you don't want, if you don't need it. The little one, that's mandatory. This one, you're gonna use it a lot, okay? Um, you won't be, you'd be using a lot up to five and a half for a certain product. If you're gonna cut a straight board, rip a board, you don't wanna pull out a chalk line and you're gonna rip it at five and a half, it goes up to five and a half, six inches, then this will be the tool you wanna use. Cause you can just go up to six inches and make this on the sheets good and just cut it a nice straight line instead of pulling out a chalk line and snapping it. But otherwise, yeah. It's nice to have, you don't have to have it. This one, we provide for you guys, but if you wanna get your own, there's a lot of different colors. They got them all different colors. 